To continue talking a little bit more about networks, uh, it's time to talk about now, I guess, about uh, protocols or the different languages that devices talk within themselves or between themselves and um, um, the, interf the control interface, which in this case is our telephone um, or ourselves. Now, most of the times how it works is um, uh, the interface or our phone talks to uh, an intermediate controller and the intermediate controller translates this into uh, each of the different uh, protocol and then it um, talks uh, to the different devices. Um, so uh, the way it works is uh, from the interface to the intermediate controller to the um, uh, end device which can be either a light bulb or a switch or whatever it is that we're trying to uh, control. And um, there are different standards, there are different kinds of communicate uh, that, uh, uh, that the device can communicate with each other. And um, I'm gonna go through the ones that I have in my configuration. I have them in different locations of the house, so I'm gonna talk to them uh, as I have them installed. In my lower level, I have already mentioned before that I have my Airport Express from Apple which is my access point. In this uh, case it works like a bridge because my SmartThings hub requires a wired uh, connection so that's uh, the link I'm uh, creating here from uh, the SmartThings hub to my Wi-Fi access point which is my Apple Airport Express. The, um, uh, one of the nice uh, things um, that uh, the SmartThings Hub offers is that uh, it's uh, putting it in a way multilingual. It speaks uh, both uh, of the most common and famous uh, communication protocols in uh, house automation, which is Zigbee and Z-Wave. It has uh, both radios inside, so it can communicate to um, uh, either kind of uh, device, which makes it very uh, useful and I will be talking a little bit more about that um, uh, later. Right now the main functionality that I'm getting out of the SmartThings Hub is that it uh, serves as an interface between my uh, Amazon Echo and uh, my Harmony Hub which allows me to uh, control all my um, entertainment devices and uh, it works very well and right now I know there are a lot of capabilities that I'm not fully using from the SmartThings Hub but uh, I'm sure in the future there will be a lot of possibilities to keep uh, uh, using it to a higher capacity. Here I have uh, the strongest part of my network control which is uh, all these controllers and little boxes. Um, right to the left is my uh, internet uh, my ISP uh, modem which then is connected to my uh, um, airport uh, extreme from Apple which handles my wireless network in the house then I have a little instant hub um, which allows me to install and control um, light switches uh, different kinds of sensors like uh, window or door opening sensors, uh, water leak detectors, um, motion sensors, um, there is a very um, even uh, door locks, um, there is a very wide um, uh, range of devices that can be used from um, the brand Instion and um, I have a Control 4 controller which deals with some legacy of uh, some light switches that I still have uh, installed around my house but uh, they are not the biggest part of my uh, network setup anymore I just deal with them because they are there but um, I walked away from the control 4 scheme a long time ago and then uh, there is uh, my um, Hue lights bridge um, that I used obviously to control my lights as I was talking about protocols, all this is um, referred to how devices talk within themselves, among themselves and uh, with uh, uh, our interfaces, which is uh, our phones and which is in the end us. 
Um, we send always a command through our phone. Our phone talks to our Wi-Fi router and the Wi-Fi router talks to each uh, little of the controller boxes um, in question. Like for example, if I want to uh, control a switch from Instion, then um, uh, I send a command through my phone, my wireless router picks it up and then it tells the Instion controller what I want to do and then the instant controller in its own language which is also what is referred as protocol goes and talks to each individual device and performs the action either turn on the light or actuate the switch or whatever it is that it's connected to it. Um, among these different protocols we have uh, uh, the most common and famous uh, in the home automation environment which is uh, Z-Wave and uh, Zigbee. Um, they both have advantages and disadvantages. They are not compatible uh, one with the other. So that's something that we always have to uh, decide and look what we get when we buy um, smart home uh, devices. If uh, they are either Z-Wave or if they are Zigbee. Because otherwise um, we can have trouble uh, making mixing both protocols in our uh, home network setup. Um, so Instion is a peculiar one because they have their own protocol. Instion has its own standard and uh, they sort of use their own radio frequency and also they use the power in the lines. So they have their own kind of language to talk uh, with their um, devices. Um, it's very nice because now Instion allows um, to be linked to uh, the Amazon Echo so it's possible to control all a lot of instant devices through Alexa um, and the instant hub um, with our voices. It's sad though that uh, even though the instant hub connects to the Nest thermostat and you can control the Nest thermostat from within the instant little uh, software app um, it's not possible to work with Alexa uh, I don't know why they haven't uh, implemented this, but at the moment it's not possible. Um, Control 4 uses uh, its uh, own sort of um, Zigbee uh, protocol. Um, the advantage of Zigbee and Zedway as well is that they are what is considered a mesh network. That means that um, the controller does not need to have uh, the end device on site to talk to it necessarily. Uh, of course, it will be necessary that it sees one at least, but after that, it's um, a mesh network. What is known as a mesh network is created, which uh, every device works as a repeater. So uh, as long um, as we uh, install more and more devices, this mesh network grows. And as long as one device sees another mesh network device, then um, the network will be uh, very reliable and um, every device will be able to communicate to the controller because every device is talking to each other. Um, and then the way it works is uh, very similar with the Hue Lights Bridge. They also use the Zigbee protocol. And um, the way it works is that when I enter a command on my phone or through Alexa, which also can be linked to the... Um, uh, uh, Hue Lights Bridge. Um, I send a command either by um, Alexa or on my phone and then um, my uh, Hue Lights Bridge pick up that command over Wi-Fi and then the bridge self talks to each of the different light bulbs and it talks to them using Zigbee protocol. So uh, basically when we send a command to our lights we're not talking to each light specifically we're talking to our uh, light bridge and the bridge is in charge to talk and um, uh, communicate with uh, every single of uh, the light bulbs out there. The um, Smart Things Hub, uh, the nice feature about it is that it has uh, both Z-Wave and Zigbee radios integrated in itself. So it, it's multilingual uh, for uh, in a figure speech and it can talk to either Z-Wave or Zigbee devices. And that's a very nice feature to have, just in case we can't help it and we end up having both kinds of devices in our network. Um, in my case, I have um, uh, a door lock, which is uh, 
um, Zigbee. Um, unfortunately, it worked uh, only with the Control 4 uh, uh, controller, which is the unfortunate part of Zigbee that even though it's the same protocol, it has its own kind of um, customized versions of Zigbee and sometimes even though they are supposed to talk the same, they don't and it's not possible to uh, use different kinds of Zigbee between brands of products and that's the case with these uh, uh, door locks uh, sometimes that are used for control 4 and light switches and stuff that they are basically just uh, useful with control 4 controllers and not with any other Zigbee controller. So. Um, the main reason I have my SmartThings hub right now is to talk to my Harmony hub which uh, talks uh, via Wi-Fi and also infrared and uh, uh, radio frequency and also Bluetooth to um, different kinds of entertaining devices. So uh, in Bluetooth um, there is uh, this other uh, short range communication which is direct from um, the controlling device and uh, the device that is to be controlled and it doesn't need an intermediate controller. This uh, communication can happen directly but uh, it's limited by range and uh, it's most of the times one-on-one -on -one peer to peer communication so that's the limitation of uh, Bluetooth. And of course the one that is on uh, above all of them is Wi-Fi which uh, the range is um, uh, wider and uh, also, uh, the bandwidth is uh, a lot higher, and um, but uh, it requires a lot more power uh, to operate. So those are the different kinds of uh, wireless signals that we have running around or flying around our house. Um, one thing that I forgot to mention uh, when I was talking about uh, the router configuration and uh, the access points is that uh, not every time is needed to have various access points. It depends on the house and the configuration. Only if you need, if you think that um, you have very thick walls or uh, very uh, long distance parts within your house that um, the access to your main router might be compromised, then it is recommendable to add uh, another um, Wi-Fi extender. Otherwise, it might not be necessary. And uh, the only thing to consider is that um, if it's possible that the Wi-Fi router is the latest uh, standard uh, available. Right now is 11800AC, uh, which is uh, uh, the one that um, uh, works on two frequencies, uh, 5 and 2 gigahertz. gigahertz. So um, that's the the latest and greatest right now so uh, as long as your router deals with that it will always be back compatible to all their styles of routers and you will ensure that you have the best performance of uh, your wireless network um, as well the only detail uh, that is left to be mentioned is that uh, of course the best uh, solution all the time is to have a wired uh, um, configuration of course is the um, not the cleanest but if it's planned properly and if you're building a house and you can see yourself to uh, um, build uh, different of these wire drop uh, points through your walls, it's always the most recommended because it's where the communication is going to be the best and the throughput of uh, data is uh, the highest. There's always going to be um, more limitation in bandwidth when it's wireless, but... Um, um, most of the times in the most common configurations of a regular house it's never a problem it has to be a very complex kind of installation and it's not very common to see that happening well uh, I think uh, this is all I have to say right now about uh, the protocols um, I prefer Zigbee over uh, Z-Wave uh, other people might prefer Z-Wave um, the only difference uh, the advantage that I can think of Z-Wave uh, over Zigbee is that um, it has a, a wider variety of um, devices that uses this protocol.